Hi class, welcome to the video lecture series on water chemistry and sewage water treatment. The syllabus has been divided into eight parts and one video each will be posted for each class. So please make sure that you are following the series properly, the sequence of the series properly so that you will not lose continuity. Uh, plus uh, I have included at least uh, three tutorial sessions in this series and when we raise the, those series make sure that you are taking a pen and a paper and actually doing it by yourself rather than listening to the video or uh, reading from the computer that is also very important okay now let's move on and before that yes i'm aware that we are all passing through a hard time remember we are not alone in this struggle this time we'll pass stay positive Stay home, stay safe, and learn to enjoy little things in life. Plant a tree, read a book, and of course, follow the online classes properly. We will keep posting videos and teaching materials for you. Any kind of support will be there. And uh, if you have any doubts in the, uh, the videos that I am posting, please contact me. You have my number. So take care, all of you. Shall we move on now to the class? The syllabus, as I said, has been divided into eight parts, water hardness, degree of hardness, that includes numericals, estimation of hardness, again includes in numericals, water softening methods, ion exchange method, reverse osmosis, municipal water treatment, including disinfection methods, chlorination, ozonation, UV radiation, dissolved oxygen, including DOD, COD determination that again includes numericals. Finally, sewage water treatment that includes clean water filter and uh, UASB method. So here we are moving on to water part one. In today's class, we will be covering what is hard water and what is soft water, what is the cause of hardness, what is the chemistry behind hardness. How to classify hardness into permanent hardness and uh, temporary hardness and finally chemistry behind the removal of temporary hardness. Let's begin with hard water and soft water. At this time of corona this is what we are doing it frequently nowadays. Washing our hands. But let me put a question. What if the soap or the water doesn't lather up with soap. When water comes into contact with soap, we expect the water to lather up. That is why we are washing our hands. But what if the water is reluctant to give you a lather? That exactly is the topic. It is not necessary that water will give you a good lather all the time. If the water lathers up when it comes into contact with water, it is termed as soft water and when it doesn't we call it hard water lathering up is a phenomenon that depends on the quality of water and the question is why sometimes water fails to give you a good lather it is because of the presence of dissolved salts of heavy metal ions present in water and the most common salts present are calcium and magnesium salts. It is not necessary when I am saying this, please don't think that calcium salts and magnesium salts are the only salts that cause hardness. No. Heavy metal ions in general cause hardness. Presence of salts of heavy metal ions. But the most common salts are calcium, calcium salts and magnesium salts. Let's move on to the definition of hard water and salt. The water that forms ready lather with soap solution is called soft water. The water that does not form ready lather with soap solution is called hard water. Instead, it forms a white shampoo like scum. And the reason the hardness is due to the presence of dissolved salts of heavy metal ions, especially calcium ions and magnesium ions. Here we are. 
we just answered the first k2 question from this module what do you understand by hard water and soft water give the cause of hardness i'm sure you are all confident to answer this question and i not right okay now let's now let's have a look at the disadvantages of hard water there are disadvantages when we use uh, hard water for domestic use and also for industrial use some of the major domestic disadvantages are that since uh, hard water does not lath with soap it is not good for laundry it's not good for bathing it's not good for cleaning the surfaces as it may leave stain on floors basins or tiles and on the industrial front it is a common cause or an important cause for boiler corrosion and also it is not at all proper for dyeing industry and many other industry i have cited only a few examples here and the list is actually much longer than this now shall we move on to the chemistry behind hardness what could be the reason for the non lathering of soap so let's see that so the question is why there's no lather when hard water is used for this we must first understand what is soap and what is hard water we already know the reason for hard water is the presence of calcium and magnesium salt so hard water contains for example calcium chloride and what is soap soap is nothing but sodium stearate so when sodium stearate comes into contact with the calcium or the magnesium present in hard water a reaction happens the sodium in the sodium stearate will be replaced by the calcium present in the hard water like this sodium stearate plus calcium chloride gives you calcium stearate plus sodium chloride calcium stearate i've shown in red color because that is a scum and it doesn't have the capability to reduce the surface tension and that is why hard water does not lather with soap here we are at the second question of keto hard water does not lather or produce much lather with soap or detergent and why so you can answer it like this children i have included as many creative questions as possible in this session and will be coming across all those questions during this lecture series the more now let's have a look at the chemical reactions involved here S sodium stearate is nothing but c17h35coona when it comes into contact with calcium it forms c17h35co twice c c and 2na plus why twice because calcium is a bivalent ion where sodium is a monovalent ion it is better if you can include this chemical reaction also if you find it too hard you may write the uh, equation which i have given in the previous uh, slide and uh, the calcium stearate doesn't have the ability to reduce surface tension and hence it doesn't lack of its soap now let's move on to the classification of hardness hardness can be classified into mainly two types temporary hardness and a permanent hardness temporary hardness is a name indicates can be removed easily that is just by boiling the water you can remove the hardness then you term it as temporary hard water but if the hardness persists even after boiling it is called a permanent hardness and what could be the cause for this temporary hardness is caused by bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium and for the same reason it is also called a carbonate hardness so what about permanent hardness permanent hardness is caused by salts other than bicarbonates of heavy metal ions let's see how it is and and for the same reason permanent hardness is also called a non carbonate hardness see here it is temporary hardness is called a carbonate hardness it is caused by the bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium or any other heavy metal ion and it can be removed on boiling and uh, permanent hardness just the reverse it's called a non carbonate hardness it is caused by salts other than bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium or any other heavy metal ion 
and it cannot be removed on boiling. So here we are at the four, third question of KTU, distinguish between temporary hardness and permanent hardness. I'm sure the answer is very easy for you. So in this slide, I've just cited few HPs of temporary hardness and permanent hardness. What is HPS? HPS is nothing but hardness producing salt. And you will be coming across this term quite frequently. So you have to get familiar with this term HPS. For temporary hardness, the HPS cited here are bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium. And for permanent hardness, the HPS are sulfates of calcium and magnesium, chlorides of calcium and magnesium and nitrates of calcium and magnesium or any other heavy metal ions. Now let's take a look at the chemistry behind the removal of temporary hardness. We already know that temporary hardness is caused by bicarbonates of calcium, magnesium or any other heavy metal ion and we also know that this can be removed on boiling. What happens? Uh, we boil the temporary hard water when we boil the temporary when we boil the temporary hard water the soluble or the dissolved bicarbonates present in the water gets decomposed to the corresponding insoluble hydroxides or carbonates just have a look here on boiling i repeat the soluble bicarbonates the soluble bicarbonates decompose to form the corresponding insoluble carbonates or hydroxide. Here is the equation citing that. For example, if it is calcium bicarbonate that is present, that forms the corresponding insoluble carbonate. And if it is magnesium bicarbonate, that forms the corresponding uh, insoluble magnesium hydroxide. Here it is. Calcium bicarbonate forming calcium carbonate whereas magnesium bicarbonate forming magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide and calcium carbonate are insoluble uh, in water. So that doesn't have the ability to cause any hardness. This temporary hardness vanishes from the water sample on boiling. Here we are at the fourth taking question. What is the chemistry behind the removal of temporary hardness by boiling? On boiling, the bicarbonates form the corresponding insoluble carbonates and hydroxide and you give the equation and that will make a good answer. 